So today I'm actually going to be installing a directly wired into the box wall connector. It's not going to be a Tesla one actually. Um, if you recall, I got a maxi charger from Autel not that long ago and it was a 1450 plugged one. And that's how I have my Tesla wall connector set up as a 1450. I had this 1450 outlet installed when we bought this house and um, I keep that plugged in. So I had really good experience with the Autel maxi charger that they provided, but I wanted one that was hardwired because I want to keep this one on a 1450 outlet. But again, having a J1772 is a benefit. I have two cars on order for quite some time now um, that will need a 1772 plug anyways. So by having this directly wired in, I'm going to be able to get the fastest available charging by being plugged directly into the panel. So the good news is with this newer home, as you'll be able to see, I have tons of room available. All of my breakers are square D. So I've already gone to the hardware store. I've already picked up a um, new two pole breaker that we're going to be using for this. So I'm gonna go over to the table and show you what we've got and how this is all gonna set up. I went ahead and also I moved this charger over a bit so that way I've got plenty of room for both chargers to be stacked right here for convenience. For this install, um, I did get some 6-2 wire and I'll explain why that size later. Um, I've got a uh, splicer here, some basic tools, some connectors which I'll go through all of them and why I chose what I chose. Uh, obviously square D breaker and then our maxi charger. So let me show you this charger and go over some of the basics here of why we're going with the setup we're going with. So this maxi charger, the one thing that's nice about it over the other one is the uh, holder for the cable is right here. It's also a 25 foot cable, which is really nice because you can get pretty far with that. This is going to be directly wired in so it comes with only the charging wire hooked up to it. So on the other side, I've, I took off the, uh, the plug there because I took that to the hardware store. But the deal is with this charger, you can get up to 50 amps of charge out of this charger. That's a really good rate. Not all of them out there will give you 50 amps of actual charging. This one will. Now some cars are limited and that won't do you any good but in this case what i would need is a 70 amp breaker to be able to get 50 amps out of this i went ahead and went with a 60 amp and the reason is with a 60 amp i can still get a total of 48 amps charged to the car which should give me about 45 plus miles per hour of charge rate and also understand the cost difference between a 60 amp two pole and a 70 amp two pole. This was about $37 and I think the 70 was $82. So quite a big jump to go from a 60 to 70 and you're only gonna get two additional amps of charging, probably not worth it. Plus you'll need to probably look at maybe even upping the wire a little bit too, but a 6-2 wire will be perfectly suited for this. That can get you between 55 and 65 amps of load, depending on the temperature rating of the wire. So we'll be slightly below that rating on the low side, which is good. So we should be really good to go. This is basically how this is going to set up. So this is the bottom of the charger. We're going to have our flex conduit coming out of this with the wire in it. Then this is going to connect into our box and this box is probably going to be mounted sideways. So it'll come in here and on the other side, we will be using um, some connectors to be able to get this into the drywall safely and make sure that there's no tension issues. You can't snag it, you can't cut it and uh, that should be to code. We also have obviously an insulated box cover um, and this is outdoor rated. So over here is where we're gonna come in and we have to be cognizant because we need to leave plenty of space for the box. Um, so for the outlet, it's probably going to go a little bit, I'm sorry, not the outlet, the box 
um, for all the cabling is going to go lower, I believe. So that way I can center the charger on the wall right there. We'll come into this cavity down here, most likely, um, and then up into the box. But the first thing we need to do here is remove the cover of this breaker. Before I do anything, I want to be explicitly clear. I am not an electrician. I am not a professional. I am not telling you how to do this, and I am not suggesting this is the right way to do it. However, I am going to install this the way that I understand that this needs to be put together. My father-in-law standing right behind the screen here um, used to be an electrician, so he's been keeping me uh, honest with this install. So we should be pretty good, but again, I need to be very clear. I am not a professional. I'm not telling you how to do this. Don't do what I'm doing. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. All right, so here's the deal. I've got everything ready to go. I uh, am getting ready to mount this on the wall. So over here on the panel, um, I do not have a kill switch from inside the panel. It is outside, but it is tab locked from the utility provider. So I will not be able to kill the power here. So I need to be extremely careful um, not to touch anything uh, directly, but it'll be okay. I've already removed the 1450, which is super convenient because this is a huge cavity down here that I will be able to work with. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mount the charger on the wall and then we will start wiring everything up. I've got my 60 amp right here ready to go. So I've already marked um, a top hole. Don't mind all the other holes. I've mounted so many chargers on here at this point. Um, but we're going to start here and uh, mount the bracket on the wall. And what's really nice about these Octel chargers is that to mount these is super easy. It's just this mounting bracket. It's two bolts into the wall. And then on the back of the charger, it slides down uh, on these two holes. And then on the bottom, you can see this little catch right here. And you'll put a bolt in there. And then it holds it in place. Pretty simple. So I'm gonna start working on that now. Let's get this mounted on the wall. All right, now that this is mounted on the wall and it is secure, what we're gonna do is take this face plate off. And to do that, there's just a couple of bolts here on the bottom and we're gonna pull this back and then it'll show us access to um, inside where we will be doing the next bit of work. So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna bring our wire up through here. We're gonna take this off, of course but we'll stick our wire through and this will tighten down and keep that wire from pulling out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the wire started and I'm going to strip the ends of it because um, they're gonna be plugging into these three ports. So what I've gotta do here is I'm going to be punching a hole underneath right here so that we go up into the box cavity and then the box is going to give us room to let the flex cable come down and then up to the charger so if you look at a wider view here we're going to go down into a box over and right back up to the charger so first things first let's get that hole drilled an inch thick All right, so now that we got our box installed and the charger is on the wall, we're gonna get the flex pipe cut to size and uh, then we will put the wire through the flex pipe and uh, feed it through. So now I wanna show you how this is all wired up now and I apologize, I was not filming while I did this and I really do not wanna rip this breaker back out to reinstall it, but essentially when you put this breaker in this side, the back side, gets pushed in first and then you push this other side in and it just clips right in place there's nothing special about it it's just that simple now what i did is i wired it up before i put it in place and you can do it either that way or you can wait till it's in place and then feed your wires through and tighten them but i just didn't want to mess with the space and in the way that this box is configured my ground i just added it in here to this bottom piece that's already set up for ground so pretty easy access there but down in through the conduit 
And over here on the charger side, same thing, just hooked right into these. And these are both hot leads and then a ground. And it's in this order, hot, hot, ground, or hot, neutral, ground. So you're going to notice by my panel, um, a lot of my cables are supposed to be red and black, but because I went with six, two wire, because I only need the three total wires, it's uh, a lot cheaper and it comes in black and white. Now you can see the rest of my house, all the 15 amp setups throughout the house are uh, black and white too. So it's not a big deal. And uh, this is the configuration of setting up this charger. So we've got our white cable on the top, black cable on the bottom when it's on this side of the panel. And that corresponds to black on the left, white in the middle, and then ground all the way on the right. So now that we're getting ready to close the cap on that, we need to set the charger to the right current. And they've got a chart here for you for the number of the dial you're gonna turn. And so since I used a 60 amp, we're gonna get 48, which means I need to be on dial number five. Let me show you how to do this. So right here, all the way on the right, is this dial and unfortunately this might be too big might have to keep looking for a smaller one but it is turned on to six so i need to turn that over to five let me go find a smaller screwdriver can't seem to find my flat head so i'm going to try it with my pick tool one of the curved ones and see if i can get this to turn to number five. Oh, there we go there we go, we are turned to number five, which means 48 amps to the car. So 60 amps, 80% of that, 48 amps. So this is all wired up. All we're gonna do is plug this connector in, put the faceplate back on down here in our junction box. We're just gonna put the cover on here and then we're gonna put the um, breaker box door right back on. That's what we're gonna do right now and then we'll check out the status of our new charger. So it's kind of the moment of truth. Um, everything's hooked up, everything's wired up. I put everything back and I've got the car right here so we can plug it right in. But the first thing we gotta do is uh, power it on and see what happens. So there's either gonna be sparks after I flip this or everything's gonna go really well. So let's say everything goes really well. Well, that's a good start. We've got lights. This is a Wi-Fi connected app controlled charger, just like the other one, which is really nice because if you have a public space or like an Airbnb or something, um, and you want people to have the opportunity to use your charger, uh, they can, you can grant them access. You can even get RFID codes or, or cards, I should say, um, for people to access them. So if you have like a business or something uh, and you only want your employees to use it. So let's plug in the car and see what happens. All right, of course, since I'm charging a Tesla, I've got the adapter on already. Let's go ahead and open up our charge port. Let's plug her in and see what happens. I have not configured anything with the charger yet. I did hear the connectors just click though. And uh, it looks like it is charging. So let's take a look, see what kind of charge we're getting. So that's really awesome. At 245 volts, it'll settle down a little bit, but we have really good voltage, brand new home. so. Um, no issues with power. So this thing is charging 12 kilowatts. And if I put that into miles for you, um, now you're talking 49 slash 50 miles an hour. This is, I believe, the fastest level two charger I've ever plugged into. Um, now again, I have really strong uh, voltage here at the house, so that's bumping it a bit, but I think 48 is probably um, what you should be expecting. So that's really good charge, two hours and 15 minutes to get to 90% from uh, 59 is really, really fast. So that's awesome. So yeah, the only thing that is left is to make any configuration changes in the app 
for this unit if I want to. Also hook it up to Wi-Fi so that we can do any software updates that are required or are needed now or later in the future. So I will get this connected to Wi-Fi. So now the only thing left to talk about is cost. How much did this cost to install? Now, of course, there is the cost of the charger itself, and this is the installation. The 60 amp breaker was $37.58. The six foot of 6.2 wire was $29.88. Five foot of flex conduit at three quarter inch thick was $5.70. The outlet box was $9.28. Cover for the outlet box, $3.58. Conduit fitting, the plastic one, that was $2.76 and then the threaded metal conduit that I used on the other side of the box, $4.68 for a grand total, $93.46. There we have it. I've got two chargers now, ready to go at all times, which is awesome. Both of them, very good charging rate. Our uh, 1450, NEMA 1450 plugged uh, wall connector, Tesla wall connector, that one we are getting, I think we're getting 36, 38 miles per hour out of that. Um, and then this one, 49, 50 miles an hour out of, so really awesome charge rates out of both of these. Now, again, I am not an electrician. Do not take anything what I'm doing or saying as being done by a professional. This is just how I installed it and um, how you could look at having an Autel charger to help supplement or in lieu of a Tesla connector because you may not only have a Tesla in the future. These are fantastic chargers, solid chargers. Autel is actually a really good company. Um, I've met them a couple times at a couple of shows and just look around. I'm not the only one saying this. So um, really good reputation, solid charger to have. Hope that you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, of course, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next time.